Are you an academic or researcher struggling to balance what you read versus what you write? How do you strike the right balance between note taking and note making? In the following showcase, Bianca Pereira shows a way. Bianca is a researcher in computer science with an interest in knowledge graphs, data semantics, and engaged research. During her PhD studies, she discovered how easy it was to quickly create a mess of research notes. So in this video, Bianca will show how she created a complete academic workflow to facilitate her process of knowledge creation, while also showing the links between her work and the academic literature. From anti-library to notes to knowledge creation and to output, let's view Bianca's process now. The workflow itself, the academic workflow, is my capstone project. So I'm still slowly building that. So I'll try to do an overview and then maybe after we can have more conversations because our time is very short today. So based on that, uh, the step-by-step -step that uh, Nick has showed before, like capture, extracting, develop and creation, I try to kind of like map what are the things that I have been currently doing. And I still have many questions, many open questions. So the first thing that was interesting for me, especially from the uh, conversations in this course, is like, how can we capture our sources? Because when you're doing research or academic work, our sources are very important and we want to keep a link of them and organize them and everything. Before I have a mess in Evernote, like as we all have, now I'm trying to divide these things. Uh, I have two concepts that are called the library and the anti-library. So for example, if you see those books that I have here, they are mostly my anti-library, which means like things that I have created and I say, I really have interest in reading them. They are good quality, but I haven't read them yet. So they are on the things that I will study. Where the things that I have processed, that I have had thoughts about them, I took notes, they become my library. So I have this concept when I'm working with research. And it's important to have an inbox where it's just where you just throw stuff that you saw, like, ah, this paper may be interesting, you put a small note. Uh, so then I'm trying to, this is still unorganized in my case. So I use Evernote and Pocket to, to do the inbox. And after the process of the inbox, some things go into the into library. And when I decide, okay, I read this paper now, then I move that into my library using Obsidian. So I have here one uh, folder, which is for files. And I put all the files in there. So I have like, I have images and I have papers here. So after having uh, those things in Obsidian, I do a backup always with everything is synchronized with my Google Drive. So I always have this on my phone or other computer. Uh, then comes the process, okay, now that I'm, I'm reading that, what I would do, I get the PDF, which I can read on my phone, on, on, I don't know how to pronounce Shodo, or preview on, on Mac. And I have different colors of highlighting meaning different things. And then from that comes the first part of extraction, which I do in Obsidian. So one example of this, this note, for example. So I have some bibliographic information rather than having text, I have a big text. Then I put what is the PDF document. So you are able to see the PDF here and then the original source. Uh, my summary some analysis, something that I was trying to do today, actually this, Oops. I don't know why it's showing off, you know, which is the idea of embedded queries. Okay. I don't know why it's not working now. It was working two hours ago. Maybe my query now is just, I'll just put it like this. So basically what it does, just showing the back link so you can see all the notes that have linked to this specific uh, paper. So I would like to have the extracting the, the piece here, but so far it's just like the words that appear in the context of the link, but I can still pass the, the mouse on that. Basically it's the same thing that they have in the backlinks, but I think it's good at some point to say, okay, this source, where, where, it, where it has been and what is it? So basically you just put as you are, you are putting a, a common block or like, code block and you just write query and then you write query as you would write in this so you can write you can use path file tags lines you can remove things i was trying for example i don't want to have my 
my daily journals, for example. So I just say, I don't want anything with the tag journal. So my daily journals don't appear anymore. So maybe I don't want my sources as well. So I can just, that's what I was trying, but it didn't work. I don't know. I don't want my source. So now it's working. So it do not appear other papers because I, I tag them always source, or you can say everything that is in, I just want things that are in this, that are in this folder. So there are multiple ways to, to do that. I think, and here I just put the PDF. So that's one of the things. And what I do, this same thing here, I put as an alias. And I'll show later when we when I talk about LaTeX and publication, why I try to do that. So as I read and I was creating my notes, I, I have always the notes in uh, my thoughts in the note itself of the paper. And or I already move into my, what I call my knowledge graph which is the knowledge base itself, where the same quote may appear in different notes, depend on the context and with some comments about that, but they always appear in the original one as well. Then uh, in the development stage, something for people, especially who write equations, we can write LaTeX equations in Obsidian, okay? Because it has math, math jacks which is a JavaScript uh, library that parse equations. So you can have those things in, in, in Obsidian. And then after, if you want to write in LaTeX, it's much easier because it's already in LaTeX. Um, and then some of the things that I found I find important when working on my knowledge base in Obsidian is the idea of keeping history because when you're talking about MOOCs, we say I will collide the, uh, the thoughts, we just break notes into, we'll delete notes and the deleting part was really hard for me because you want to keep the history of things. And that's where I was finding the, the comment from the discourse in the discourse uh, from Uji. And she was like, but I, I say things just in case, but our just in case is really because we care about the history. How, how was this thought constructed? So for example, especially when I'm doing data analysis from the from inductive perspective, so it's like more bottom up. So rather, uh, in a let's stay with the final version and throw everything away. I will have just one note, which is not even none of those, which is just the summary of my results. But for research, we want to say, okay, in the first stage, my raw data, in the second stage, how did I analyze? What are the results? And the link with the original raw data. And then in stage two, how they, did I cluster those things? How they relate to the original data? All those things have links. Unfortunately, I cannot show them at the moment because it's still not published. I would like to. <laughs> but for the capstone, I will create at least an example so you so you'll be able to see how I do that. Um, so yeah, then I think that the idea of MOOCs or the emergence is like if you are doing deductive research, it's good to start from MOOCs um, or something more high level, then you go breaking down uh, on what you, you're trying to do. And the inductive is always good, also good, but keeping these links all the way up. And then after you have written everything marked down in Obsidian, then the last step, so I say like I create a MOOC with all the ideas per section of the paper that I want to write. Let's say introduction, those are the ideas, which was something that I was talking yesterday. Uh, and then after I can even write each section of the paper itself as different notes in Obsidian. And then I can transfer them into Overleaf because Overleaf, uh, for, for those who use LaTeX, I don't use Word. I never write papers in Word. I'm against writing papers in Word because formatting is really hard in Word. So in LaTeX, you just have, you just change the template, which they usually come given by the conference. And you can actually just import your markdown files. So you basically have your markdown files, you use package hybrid markdown, and then you just import them. And then you just say markdown input, and it say the name of the file. And then when you recompile to generate the PDF, so I have this note here. It's just normal markdown. I just took from Obsidian and, and uploaded. So it's like introduction, and then what happens here? my introduction is there on the format of the conference. The, sub the subsection, important point, the same thing. And then 
I need to check still the equations. Okay, I put like a pseudo equation here. And as it was already in LaTeX, it already appears here. So there are still a few things like you cannot use the media wiki type of links. You need to use the normal markdown links, otherwise it doesn't work. There is a trick also to put the images here. You just need to have one piece of the, in the original LaTeX and need to show the image in the two columns one. But I can share those things with you in this course later, like how to write them. And there are still many open questions like how to create a good environment for the for the mobile because uh, we don't have Obsidian. I don't want to have all my notes in the mobile, but I would like to to have the notes directly in Obsidian. Uh, yeah, I still have many things to talk about. Well, I suppose my time is up. Seeing Bianca's whole workflow shows what's possible for researchers using Obsidian. Why is that so important? Because she shows how you can powerfully use plain text files at the core to research and create knowledge that you can grow into a research paper, a master's thesis, or even a PhD dissertation. Bianca shows how the researcher can cultivate a healthy balance between note taking and note making. As always, there are so many more fascinating people I hope to showcase with you because they show how empowering and personal the process of thinking and managing knowledge should be. What did you like most about Bianca's showcase? Let me know in the comments below and until next time, stay connected.